Hello, everybody. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lundowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Well, today was another fun one. The Preds took on the Sharks. Uh, before we get into that, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Cody over two, West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockey, hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Sorry, folks. Had a bit of a moment there. All righty. So with that being said, the Preds enter third in the league in power play and the return of Nick Benino. Because Benino did not get a chance to play with the – Wild against the Preds last season. Um, he returned to the, today with the Sharks of so the return of Nick Benino versus the Preds. Yeah. All righty. So shots were 29-26. San Jose. Faceoffs were 54 46. San Jose. Nashville was one for one on the power play, while San Jose was 0 for three. Two penalty minutes for the Sharks, uh, six for the Preds. Hits were 12 to 11. San Jose. Blocks were 16 to nine. Nashville. Eight giveaways were eight to seven. Nashville. Giveaways this point of year going up to about mid November uh, in the eight area are fine. You want it around five. Three to five a game. Right, you do. Goal. I mean, they won the last game against Minnesota with none. So that just tells you if you give the puck away, you give them a chance. Right. Um, so there's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say before we got into this, um, for those clamoring for Ingram to be the permanent backup up there, uh, there's a slight problem with that. Redditch is under a one-way contract. So that would require them to either move him or place him on unconditional waivers. Right. And release him. Um, they don't want to do that, and they don't want to lose Ingram. Ingram's on a two-way contract, and as long as he is back in Milwaukee by 11-14-2021, he will be good as far as not having to go through waivers again. Right. Um, so there's that. Uh, scoring in the first period uh, was Matt Duchesne, his second with assist from Roman Yossi, his fifth, and Brian Johansson, his third. That was on the power play. One minute, 20 seconds in. By the way, I'm, I have some other things I wanted to say, but I'm going to save that for the end of the video. You guys are really going to like it. <laughs> I hope. Uh, scoring in the second period, Phil Forsberg, his third with an assist from Roman Yossi, his sixth, and Dante Fabro, his third. That Fabro Yossi line seems to be clicking. Yeah, it does. Um, scoring in the third period at the 11 45 mark was Timu Meyer with his fourth with an assist from Jalen Dalene, his second, and Logan Couture, his sixth. Then scoring at the 1907 mark on an empty net was Mikel Granlin, his second with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his third. Preds win 3-1. That's back-to-back -back wins. Yep. Uh, three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Phil Forsberg with the game-winning goal. Second star of the game, Roman Yossi with two assists. UC Saros with the, third, with the first star. Um, goaltenders uh, on the night were James Reimer. He stopped 23 at 25 with a 0 .920 save percentage. 0 for 1 on the power play. Um, that's what probably did him in is the power play goal. Um, right. Uh, let, let's be honest there. Uh, UC Saro stopped 23 or 22 of 23 on even strikes, 6 of 6 on the power play. 28 for 29 with a 0.966 save percentage. Really well game, played game by the Preds. Right. Uh, it seemed like Yossi had five shots on goal. Duchesne had five shots on goal. Sissons had three. Forsberg had two. Trennan had two. 
The only person without, well, all the people without shots on goal were Luke Kunin, Matt Benning, Matias Atcom, and Mark Barvesky. Okay. Those were the only people without shots on goal. Everybody else had a shot on goal. Yeah, I thought it was a real team effort tonight. Yeah, I agree there. Um, whenever Riddich is back, that gives Saros, you know, three games, then an off day, three games, then an off day. Right now they're doing four in an off, which that's a little much for a goalie who, who hasn't started since being in Milwaukee. Right. You know, and he's been up there since the cup run. So, right, yes. So, you haven't been a starter in, you know, five years. But when you're sitting behind Pekka, nobody better to learn from, but that doesn't get you the stamina you need. Right. It doesn't. And, 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 and that's not a knock on sorrow. That's, that's a knock on, on, on guys like Laviolette and, and Hines for not starting him more. Right, I agree. Pack up four games and then you start him one. If he was your future and you wanted him to be the starter, you would have you would have done two games, then two games, then two games, and two games, and keep it even. Right. And then if somebody does get a hot glove, you know, win two, you start that guy a third game. If he loses, you start the next guy. It's kind of a, right. win, a play by win committee at that point. If you're really going to do that, if you're right, winning, you're in. If you're not, you're out. I think that's how they should have ran it, but that's that's neither here nor there. That's where we where we should have been, but this is where we are. Right. Um. So I, I've talked about that. The other, the big elephant in the room, Ilya Tolvanon, P.J. Subban, Cal Gary. Let's talk about this. ESPN, you guys got to hire better commentators. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I have no room to talk because I do typos physically all the time. But right. Normally, I will never do that. I, I, I do my best. They have this thing in Nashville called an audio name book of the player saying his name in English. If you can't say a city that is covered that a hockey team plays in, and you cover hockey. I don't even know. When when you have not to throw some people under the bus, but when you have presidents of teams, media types, um, minor league teams, and everyone making fun of your product that you're putting out, just from a commentary standpoint, let's not get on the fact that they chase the puck the whole game. Right not paying attention to the actual action or zooming in at all. I feel like I'm watching in, in you know, uh, uh, on flow hockey for some college team. Not that I'm trying to knock the NCAA. They sometimes do, they do a better job of pronunciation. But right. ESPN, I know this is your first year, but you really got to get it together. Hockey fans are used to expecting more. Right. Now, yeah. I'm going to say that this is still better than NBC. Because it's not one-sided commentary. Right, it isn't. It's not, oh, well, I don't like this team, so I'm going to the other team, you know, pat them on the back, pat them on the back, pat them on the back. No, you know, enough of that. Let's call it down the middle. That's what we're here for. That's what we do here. We call it down the middle. If, if, if our guys have a bad night, we call them out on it. If your guys have a bad night, we call them out on it. Right. Because we want the best from everyone. We want Hey, if every team played to the best of their ability, we would never have a problem. But I know there are teams that don't do that. All right. All right. Scratches. Uh, Lane Peterson, Yonan Gud Gudvanovic, and uh, Sateri Hataka. Uh, those were your scratches for San Jose, scratches for Nashville, your usual subjects. And subjects, I mean being held hostage because I'm going to say this now. Free Rocco Grimaldi. Play him or trade him. One of the two. Philip Meyer, same thing. Play him or trade him. Ben Harper, I'd say send him down because he ain't doing it. Right. 
Um, that's how I feel about the start of this year. Now, look, <laughs> we did, we have now got a little bit of a, we have this thing called the streak going. Right. And, and, and according to this, we are now fourth in the division. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it, it's, how do I put it, without being harsh. Um, we started out one and four. Not a great start, but in, our, in, in the last two games, I've liked what I've seen. Great, so have I. In the first five games. Where was that? Right. Yeah, exactly. The LA game, they were still making clinical errors and major mistakes where they only almost gave LA the game. Right. So that win was luck. And a little bit of the fire being lit under their butt. Right. But to sit here and look at it this way. You know, I, I just think that there's a lot of problems here. And, and, and look, we could get into the playoffs off of the skin of our teeth. You know right. why? Because our division is horrid this year. Right. It is. As long as you beat your division teams and you stay in that hunt, you could have a losing record and make the playoffs. Right. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to win in regulation, lose in regulation, get a point. Right. But Winnipeg did what Chicago's done so far with their one point. Arizona's done it with their one point. Now, uh, right. there are only two teams without a win in our in, in the NHL, and they're both in our division. Right. And that's Chicago and Arizona. Check out our YouTube page. We will have a video on Chicago tonight about that situation. And to be honest about that situation, I think that hangs over Chicago's locker room right now. I think that, right. that is a problem when you when you have that in your locker room or, or like in that side inside your organization, it can hold you back. It can. Um, um, I'm, I'm just going to do a quick update real quick on scores for the night. Uh, Vegas beats Colorado three to one. Uh, Tampa beats Pittsburgh five to one. Uh, Calgary beats New Jersey five to three. Calgary has been a big surprise this year. They have been playing very good hockey. They have been. Um, uh, Seattle's beating Montreal four to one right now in the third. Uh, Anaheim's in the third with Winnipeg. Uh, they're up two to two to one. And Minnesota is at the end of the second with Vancouver. They're up two to one. Um, there are only a handful of, there's only one undefeated team. Uh, there's two undefeated teams in the entire league. Uh, the Florida Panthers, they are. I thought there were four. Huh? thought there were four. Oh, there are four. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, they're five and oh. St. Louis Blues are five and oh. Florida Panthers are six and zero. Oh. Carolina's five and zero. Oh. Well, Washington's four zero oh and two if you count overtime losses. Right. Um. Yeah, I mean, Calgary's four and one, four one and one. I mean, they're doing really well. San Jose, they're no slouch. They're four and two now. Four and three, I believe. If you count tonight, um, you know, um, the West, the Central, to be honest, another surprise is Buffalo and Detroit, but Detroit's yeah. not really a shocker. It's more of they're hanging in there for now. It's not really looking good for them just based on, on their negative one goal differential. But Tampa's having a goaltending issue. They're 0 2 and 1 at home. They play better right. than on the road, which is bad. Um, Toronto's 2 1 and 1 and 0 3 on the road. 
they play better at home than on the road. Right. Um, you know, uh, Nashville, they, let's just look at their home and road real quick. Uh, home, they're two, three, two and three, and on the road, they're one and one. I mean, not to say that we're, we're consistent, but we are consistent. Either we're really right. good or we're really bad. That really part is like the most consistent. <laughs> right. Um, the other part is consistency in net. Saros has given us consistent good starts all season. Right, he has. The goal against Saros tonight, hit his pad, popped up. All right. There was enough time for a defenseman to go clear the player that shot the puck right in front of him, but nobody there, to get him out of the way. When the puck was in the air, he tapped the puck off the top of his pad in the net. Right. That is not Saros' fault when he is in the in a, in a V butterfly, basically face forward on the ground, doing everything he can to stop pucks. And, well, you know, every once in a while, one's got to go by you. Right. And, and I think that as long as we can keep these one goals, keep it consistent defense, and, and keep our power play going, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. You know, on the on the side of err on the side of caution in that, but you know, I, I think that you know uh that coming up uh, on that full schedule kind of thing that when when you really look and break down into everything that, that the Preds do, um I think that that's the big part there. Um, the next game for the Preds is Saturday, October 30th, which is in four days. Um, <coughs> all right. So with that being <coughs> said, I think, and this is a big I think, that the Admirals play Friday and the Everglades play Friday. I'm going to double up here and check our schedule just to make sure that I'm 100% right here. All right. Yes, the President Everblades play Friday. And then we have a triple on Saturday, and then we are off for Sunday on Halloween. Um, then we're back on, on the second with the Preds and the Flames. And then we're playing against Edmonton. Um, if I remember correctly, yeah, those are that, those are at 8 o'clock Central, or uh, the Flames games at 8 o'clock Central puck drop. Okay. Um, uh, Friday, November 5th. Um, just a scheduling note. Friday, November 5th. Um, just giving you guys a quick heads up. The uh, video may be live, if I remember correctly. You're going to that game on the 5th, right? Believe so. Because the 6th is dog day. Whatever is hockey fights cancer the fifth. I think uh, going to that one, I believe. Hang on a second. I'll just pull it up up here. Uh, yes, we should would should give a quick update on that. Uh, the Admiral's promo schedule. All right. So promotion schedule. Ah, yes, Hockey Fights Cancer Night, the fifth. That video, we will be live, but the Preds video will not come until morning on a basis that we will be at an Admirals game, and that game, as soon as we get back, the Preds game will be starting. And by that point, we will be exhausted. Right. Nine o'clock game, nine o'clock puck drop nights will be 
um, uh, how do I put it? Done in the morning on the next day. Uh, they will be either, we either will, uh, you know, we'll go figure out, we'll go get, I'll go pick up John or we'll figure something out. Right. Um, so uh, regarding that, unless we're feeling energetic, which in that case would be rare, but you know. <laughs> uh -huh. um, with hockey fights cancer, you guys always know it's special as I'm rocking the jersey. Don't forget to donate to your local cancer uh your community cancer foundations um, uh, right here in Milwaukee, we have the Freighter uh, Cancer Center, uh, the Vanderbilt Children's Cancer Center, um, the, uh, uh, what is that? Fort Myers Southwestern Florida can uh, Cancer Rehabilitation Program. Um, so there's a bunch we could, you guys can donate to in your local areas. Um, it's something that hits home with me and John and our families as uh, uh, my in-laws deal with that um, at the current moment. Um, so as I said, you know, I have my cousin, he has cancer, my grandma passed from it. Um, so we've had our, our losses. So we, we want to give back to the community. Any donation you guys can make, if it's five bucks, that, that, that's more, that's enough. You know, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. Any donation right. helps. Uh, the American Cancer Society is another one if you just want to go general. Um, their Facebook page is always accepting donations. They're even accepting signed hockey merch for their auctions all the time. So if you're, you're ever cleaning out your area and you have hockey merch, you're looking to, you know, you're, you're moving stuff in and moving stuff out, you know. Right. You know, they will always take that for donations. Um, Otherwise, uh, we'll do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll live and we'll auction it off for you. We'll make a big thing of it. Get a bunch of people, get some money raised for these charities because that's what yes. we're really for. The community that gives us hockey, we should give back and make sure that it has the hockey community has more people to come into it. Right. All righty. So that's all I got for you, folks, on this episode of from milwaukee to nashville we will see you guys again friday yes i know the everblades play tomorrow but due to circumstances that are outside of our control tomorrow's video will be a graphic video due to um flow hockey we cannot uh broadcast in two separate areas and uh i have a, a sickling in my home and uh, do not want, no, it's not COVID, but just a cold. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I wanted to say that uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, thanks for all the well wishes. Oh, by the way, we just, I just saw that uh, yesterday. I forgot to mention that um, on uh, Sunday's video, because when I posted on Sunday, a lot of you guys were commenting and hoping us well, and we got the video yes. off. Uh, pulled the video out of our butt somehow and pulled enough strength together to get through it. We're not 100%. We're nowhere no. near. <laughs> but um, we got one more coming for you tonight. So pay attention to our YouTube page because that's where that video is going to be. Um, I will share the link to our Facebook page, but that'll be about all I do on that. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. And enjoy the rest of your week till Friday. Yep. Yeah.